Horror films have always had a knack for disturbing phone calls, yet they never really got close to the horror in 80 year old widow experiences when her Microsoft expert calls and asks for Amazon gift cards to fix the problems she doesn't even have. However, the following are still pretty disturbing phone calls that every horror fan should know. So, let's have a look. We start with Somebody's Watching Me. You see, stalkers have always loved to telephone their dream girl, as any horror fan knows. Sometimes they give their dream girl, or boy, an experience they will never forget. In John Carpenter's film Somebody's Watching Me, a woman named Leigh moves to LA to start a new career directing live television. Only, someone doesn't want to make things easy for her. On her first day of work, she receives the first of many terrifying anonymous phone calls from a mysterious man and finds her apartment door unlocked as well. It's a bad start. Throughout the film, Lay's new life in LA only becomes worse as the mystery man continues to call and mail her gifts, including a swimsuit. Thanks, but no thanks. Anyone would feel unsettled after receiving strange phone calls and has an apartment door that won't stay shut. Not to mention that her lights in her apartment magically turn on and off, or that the mystery lover has bugged her apartment and is watching her through cameras, so that he can call her at just the right moment every time. Of course, she doesn't know that, which makes these calls truly terrifying to receive. There are two things you can't run away from in horror, your fears and the monster beneath your bed, unless you tuck away your feet under the blanket, of course. In Wes Craven's iconic film Nightmare on Elm Street, the monster just doesn't hide beneath people's beds or inside their closets, nope. Freddy Krueger, a former child murderer who rises from the dead out of pure spite, has the ability to enter people's dreams. That's right, he enjoys playing cat and mouse with his victims until he goes for the finishing move. And what happens in someone's dream happens in real life too, as the main characters are unlucky enough to discover. I can't say that it's all bad though, because in one memorable scene, Nancy receives a phone call from Kruger himself. He says, on second thought, receiving a phone call from Freddy may not be a good thing after all. But when has any horror character or fan followed the rules anyway? Some of you may remember that soon after Nightmare on Elm Street became popular, they created a hotline where you could call Freddy yourself. Just like Freddy Krueger, the antagonist in Lucio Fulci's film A Ripper in New York enjoys playing a violent game of cat and mouse. The film's plot focuses on Lieutenant Fred Williams, a burnt out police officer who investigates a series of brutal murders. Someone doesn't like beautiful women and is not only offing them, but also disfiguring them. Throughout the film, Lieutenant Williams is repeatedly called by the murderer himself, who teases him that he has done it again. Even worse is the fact that the killer has a bizarre duck-like voice. Just what exactly had Donald Duck been doing in his free time? The worst phone call that Lieutenant Williams receives is when the killer tells him that he would like to dedicate a murder to him. The victim is Kitty, a lady of the night that Lieutenant Williams was close to. And while the movie was received positively in Italy as well as the United States, it is unlikely that Fulci was happy to answer a phone call informing him that his film was banned in the UK for its explicit and gruesome violence towards women. Things come with a twist for our fourth entry on this list. If you don't want to receive a phone call from a deranged stalker or a sadistic serial killer, what about one from yourself? In Takashi Miike's classic film, One Missed Call, people receive bizarre voicemails from themselves, their future selves that is. The voicemail is always stated two days in the future, which just happens to be their death day as well. Throughout the film, people die in ways that are reminiscent of Final Destination, which we all appreciate for its humor. One character has a violent encounter with Thomas the Train, while another one takes a trip down the elevator shaft. One character is so scared after receiving a voicemail that she agrees to have an exorcism performed on live TV. Of course, it goes about as well as you might think. As the death count increases, a detective realizes that every case is connected by two things. Every time a person dies, their phone calls the next victim and leaves them a voicemail from their future self, and the red jawbreaker is left in every victim's mouth. While the film has many twists and turns, the main takeaway is this. Your phone can connect you not only to other people, but malicious spirits as well. Not as bad as meta-tuning in, but still pretty bad.
One of the earliest films to explore the theme of disturbing phone calls is Anatoly Litvak's Sorry Wrong Number. The film focuses on a wealthy woman called Leona Stevenson who is bedridden. When she tries to call her husband one day, named Henry, she doesn't reach him. Instead, a cross telephone line has her overhearing two men planning a murder for that night. Leaving her bed, Leona goes searching for her husband, who she comes to believe is connected to the men on the phone. And she's right, her husband owes the criminal some money, and he may be off if he doesn't pay up. The film has many twists and turns that lead nowhere good. But unlike some of the other films on this list, Sorry, Wrong Number doesn't have just one terrible phone call, but three. The second call happens after someone gives Leona the wrong number to reach her husband. Why? Well, the number is for the city morgue. Leona thinks her husband is already dead, and we can't really blame her for that. But Henry is very much alive. Therefore, the third happens when Henry calls his wife to tell her to run, but it's too late. The intruder, one of the criminals and forcers, is inside their home. Since Henry hasn't paid up, they're going to make Leona pay instead. Exactly what you think happens, happens before the line goes dead. When Henry calls back, the killer says, sorry, wrong number, before the police close in and arrest Henry instead of the real suspects. Moving over to our next entry, When a Stranger Calls. You couldn't pay me enough to be the babysitter in Fred Walton's When a Stranger Calls. The film opens with a scenario that horror fans may find familiar. A couple leaves for the night, leaving a babysitter back to look after their young children. What starts off as a normal night soon takes a turn for the worse when the babysitter, Jill, receives a phone call from a mysterious man asking if she has checked on the children. The man doesn't just call once, but several times and becomes more aggressive with each call. When Jill finally decides to call the police, they trace the man's call, only to find that he is calling from inside the house. That is also when Jill races to check on the children. But well, let's just say uh, they aren't alright, okay? They're in a place where they will never need a babysitter again, which I guess saves some money, but you know, that's not the point. Now all of this happens in the opening sequence. The scene made such an impression on horror fans that it's considered one of the scariest openings to this day. Even Wes Craven paid tribute to it with the opening scene in his film Scream, that all of you know, when Drew Barrymore enters a call from Ghostface. Our seventh entry is all about phone pranking the wrong person, because what exactly happens when a prank goes too far? Well, Don't Hang Up follows four teenage boys who go viral after convincing a woman that an intruder is in her home where her daughter is. Mm. When Sam's parents leave for the weekend, he invites Brady over to do, you guessed it, more prank calls. They need more views and likes and, of course, subscribers. Only Sam and Brady aren't very happy when someone else starts calling them instead, over and over again. His name is Mr. Lee and he gets upset when people hang up on him. Especially if it's Sam or Brady. You see, Mr. Lee knows everything about the boys and shows them that he is a prankster too. As a prank, he takes Brady's parents hostage, Mortal Kombat's the other two boys, and takes control over the phone line so Sam and Brady can't call 911. He uses information, like the fact that Brady has slept with Sam's on and off girlfriend Peyton, to turn the boys against each other in typical Jigsaw style. If Brady kills Sam, then his parents will be freed. If Sam kills Brady, then Mr. Lee will let another captive of his go, Peyton. As the film delves into Prankster vs Prankster, you eventually learn that Mr. Lee lost his family because of the prank the boys became famous for. His wife was the one who believed that there was an intruder in her home and accidentally shot her daughter. And I am sure you know what his wife did next. If you feel bad for Mr. Lee, don't worry, he ensures that the boys will never prank call someone again. This list wouldn't be complete without this classic horror film, Bob Clark's Black Christmas, which ranks as one of the scariest films ever made. The film focuses on a group of sorority girls who have their winter plans interrupted by a pervert called The Moaner, who has made obscene phone calls to them before. Only this time, the moaner doesn't just want to call the girls, he wants to make it a Christmas that they will never forget. So what does he do? Well, he hides inside their house, where he calls them over and over again, becoming more deranged with each call. Seriously, just look up what he says, because there is no way I, I can say that here. Anyway, he doesn't stop there either. The moaner is more harmful than your regular peeping Tom. He doesn't want the girls to leave him, and he makes sure that they can't. After the third murder, the police traces the moaner's calls as coming from inside the house, something that you may remember happens in When a Stranger Calls as well. Both films were heavily inspired by the urban legends of The Babysitter and The Man Upstairs. 
The film ends with the mourner getting his dream Christmas present. There is one girl left alive and a police officer guarding her door, allowing him to escape the house from the back in search of a new phone. And, surprise surprise, the film ends with the familiar sound of the house phone ringing yet again. So, thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video, shout out to January for writing the script for this video. And if you have any ideas or suggestions, leave a comment. And I see you again next Sunday in a few days for the next How To Beat video. And then next week, until, until the end of time. You take it easy, binge another one and take care.